Hey everyone, welcome back to Duality Repair. Tonight I have another power amplifier to look at. This is a Yamaha P2075. It's a 50 watt dual channel power amplifier. And it's got a problem, so let's power it on. You can see the protection and power lights both come on. And after a few seconds, the protection light goes out and you can hear that relay click. And as always, I have a uh, both of the outputs hooked up to my dummy resistors and I have my scope hooked up to those resistors so we can monitor the output so let's just go to the scope. Alright here we are at the scope I have channel A output to channel A input and channel B output to channel B input and so let me turn up the volume on both see if we get anything so here's channel A that's halfway that's max we're getting nothing and I have a 2 kilohertz um, sine wave going in Channel B, turning it up, halfway, nothing, full, nothing. Absolutely nothing on the output. So, there is a problem indeed. Let's go ahead and take the cover off and take a look inside. Okay, here we are inside the unit. Pretty simple design. Obviously, it's basically a one-board design, minus the volume control board here on the bottom. And let's just go through it really quick. I immediately uh, see three items of concern. Number one is right at the input power. You can see there's electrical tape covering these input wires. So that means somebody's been in here before. Who knows what happened uh, in addition to them, you know, probably having to rework these wires. Um, but let's follow the, the signals through here. So we have our power coming in over here. It's going to trace through these uh, two wires here to our main transformer. Transformer is going to output through these two red and black wires. Uh, bridge rectifier, filter caps, and then all of our power is going to be dispersed from there, our voltages. You can see another small bridge rectifier here. Uh, which is going to create a, another smaller voltage for the rest of the board. And then I do have a fuse here. I checked it. It is good. So that's good. So first item con of concern was these uh, reworked wires over here. Second item, maybe you've already seen it, these two capacitors. So I know that there's glue around all of these. You can see if you look right here, you can see some discoloration around the, ca the capacitors here as well. And no doubt there's glue around these, but you can also see the, the brown brownish uh, discoloration around those so I'm guessing one or both of those has leaked out so that is a primary um, area of concern but then number one for me and it's definitely not obvious because there's nothing visible about it what is this so this is a dual channel integrated audio amplifier and uh, I saw this thing before I even opened the cover I can see it through the vent holes in the grate on the top cover and it, it looks identical to uh, an integrated amplifier that I had to replace on an old Sony receiver and the reason why it's such a pain at least for me it was was because they they don't make these anymore and I had to find one on eBay and it was just a pain and immediately I'm expecting this and suspecting that and that's actually the first thing I'm going to test. I already printed out the data sheet for it. Let's take a look. So it looks like there's 15 pins. We have a left channel on the left and right channel on the right with our power inputs in the middle and so really I'm just going to probe the input versus the output and I'm I'm kinda of hoping that we don't even have an input so that this you know I can rule this out as an issue and there's something else prior to this but what I'm thinking is that we're gonna have an input and we're not gonna have an output on both channels so that's gonna be very easy to test we're gonna go back to the scope I'm gonna keep my setup the way it is and I'll just probe one channel at a time. Really, if I probe one channel, it's probably going to be the same result on the other, but I'll probe them both, uh, likely. So let's go ahead and go back to the scope. Okay, I have everything hooked up. Um, I have the input to the left channel on the top and the output on the right from that integrated circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and power it up, and we'll see if we get anything on either channel. Okay, the relay click, and... I do have my signal going in, so I have nothing. I have nothing on the input to the integrated circuit, nothing on the output. So that's actually a relief. That looks like that uh, something is going wrong before that integrated circuit. That doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but uh, it, it may mean that it's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just check the right channel just to be sure. I'll power it off while I do that. I don't short anything. So again, that was the left channel. Let's check the right channel. Just gonna check the input since uh, basically we know the output's dead. Input's gonna be 14. Let's go ahead and check that pin. All right, so I'm hooked up to 
14 for channel A, powered up here. Nothing. Awesome. Good. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at the schematic and see what comes before this amplifier to see what went wrong. Maybe it's just those two capacitors. That would be simple. Okay, folks. So this schematic is four pages long. I'm just going to show you the input page uh, because this is where I'm going to start probing. And if necessary, I'll show you the subsequent pages. But um, so let's take a look. Obviously, we have two channels, channel B on the bottom, channel A on the top. Since they're identical, let's just start with looking at channel A. So our input comes in through the XLR connector on the left. We're going to go through this jumper, we'll go through a series of uh, resistors, diodes, capacitors, more resistors. We'll hit our first operational amplifier uh, before we reach our volume adjustment knob. So what I did off camera was I noticed that the uh, signal LED on the volume adjustment knob was not illuminating. And so that means either the LED is dead or the signal's not even reaching this volume knob. So I probed this connection here on the volume knob and there is no signal there. So that was pretty quick. We know our signal's getting lost somewhere back here. And since uh, our signal just goes through this jumper, uh, really, oh, sorry about that. Really, we're just going to get lost uh, somewhere in here. So what I'm going to do is start probing backwards. I'm going to take a look at R109, then I'll move my way back through the op amp, uh, through these capacitors, through the resistor, until we, until we reach a signal. So I know we're going to have a signal here at this jumper and basically at this resistor. And I know we're n we do not have a signal at the output of this resistor, R109. So let's find out where we're losing it. So let me start by probing R109. All right, this is a sanity check. Let's go ahead and probe the input at the XLR connector. There's our signal, looks fine. So here we go, let's start backwards at R109. Here's one side of R109, nothing. Here's another, nothing. Okay, let's keep moving back. So we know we have no output from our op amp IC101. That's pin seven. We should have an input, well, yeah, let's see if we have an input at uh, pin 6. Let me probe that. Aha, well, that looks like crap, but that's my scope. Not able to trigger. I'm going to do another video uh, eventually on uh, recapping my entire scope because I don't think it's ever been done. Here's the input to the op amp, IC101. We have an input. So that was fast. IC101 is either dead or it's not supply it doesn't have its supply voltage plus and minus 15 volts one of those two things easy to check let's go ahead and rule out voltage I'll pro go ahead and get my meter out and we'll check for plus and minus 15 on pins uh, it's tough to see two and four something like that I can just probe all the pins. I should have plus and minus 15 between ground and two of those. Can you see that? A little bit. Sorry about that. You can see well enough. So let me ground out my ground probe and my negative probe here. All right, here we go. I'm going to just go around the bend here and probe each pin. I think it's two and four. Let me just probe each one. So I got nothing on that pin. Nothing on that pin. Nothing on that pin. And nothing on that one. Okay, we're 0 for 4. Let me probe the other 4. Nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. And nothing on that one. I think I know what we have a problem with. Okay. No plus or minus 15. That's good because I don't have any op amps. That's very good. Uh, let's see. So plus and minus 15. Okay, we're gonna have to take a look at the schematic here and try to figure out where that plus and minus 15 is sourced from. All right, so let's take a look at the schematics here. Uh, we're trying to identify the source of the plus and minus 15 volts. So if we look on this page, we can see there are two taps off the transformer, one going to uh, bridge D213, one going to D212. We're concerned with D212. That's going to produce plus and minus 34 volts. Let's take a look at where that uh, leads to. So if we look at this page, there are two taps off the plus and minus 34. Let's look at the top one. Um, if we look at the output of that, 
we have plus and minus 15 volts. So that's where we're looking at. And wouldn't you know it, look at the two capacitors um, in there. 220 and 221, or excuse me, 221 and 222. Those are the two that look to be leaking. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board here. You can see this, uh, the plus and minus 15 are produced by two zeners. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at those because those could be bad as well. We'll check for shorts here. Okay, so let's check across uh, the zeners. Oops, sorry, that was the resistor. Well, that's the zener. Yeah, that's shorted. Let's check the other one. Yep, those are shorted. So I wonder if these capacitors uh, may have shorted, which took out the zeners, or vice versa. Might as well check the resistors over here, just to see if they're shorted. No. No? Okay. Um, darn it, that's too bad. I don't, I don't have any zeners, um, and if I do, I don't know if I'm going to have any plus or minus 15, or 15 volt zeners. Um, I'm sure I have these capacitors so I can replace those resistors. I don't know. So I'll probably have a DigiKey order. I was hoping to get this all repaired tonight, and it doesn't look like it. So um, I will get these on order. We'll replace all six of these components. And that'll at least give us our plus and minus 15 volts. Whether or not that gives us, you know, it alleviates all of our issues, who knows. But that'll confident that'll get us our signal past the IC101 there. So I'll come back once I have those in and installed. The new components have arrived, and I was going to remove the old components, but I noticed this. I wanted to show you first. So I'll take a look at these two joints up here. This is one of the capacitors. And you can see that somebody reworked that. I don't know if they tried to remove the capacitor and put it back in or what, but the, the solder joints look terrible, so it's worth noting. All the other uh, solder joints for the other capacitor, the two zeners and the two resistors, they look untouched. So this is the only one of concern, but I'll clean that up once I put all the new components in. The new components have been installed. No problems there. I cleaned up the bottom of the board quite a bit as well, so we're ready to test. Let's go ahead and go to the scope. All right, here we are back at the scope. I have my two kilohertz sine wave as my input to the amplifier, and I have channel A of my scope hooked up to channel A of the amplifier, and uh, likewise for channel B. So here we go. I'm going to turn up channel A, and nothing. That's a bummer. Okay. Well, let me try channel B. Ah, all right. So channel B is working. You can see I can adjust the output there. Good. Channel A is definitely not working. So we'll have to figure out what's going wrong there. But at least um, replacing those components you know, got us one output. And we'll have to figure out what the problem is with channel A. I was going to start probing to try and identify the issue with channel A. But if we look closely, we can see it right there. The trace to both outputs is cracked. And I probed the board side, and you get the signal. And I probed the... Um, tip side and we're getting nothing so really if I just uh, repair those solder joints there should be back in business Let's take a look at B while we're at it Let's see how these uh, joints look and that bottom one hard to tell if that's cracked or that's just uh, the angle that we're looking at it certainly looks cracked I'm going to touch up all four of those and we should get channel A back the only other issue I'm going to have is um, the LEDs on the front, they don't illuminate, or at least not for uh, the signal, so I may have to replace those, but first things first, let's get channel A working again. All right, I reworked the solder connections at both outputs. They look uh, much more solid now, so we're ready to retest again. All right, ready to test again. I'm gonna start with channel A. All right, there we go. Now we got our signal. So it's just those connections there. Let me double check channel B. All right, check their linearity. So they're both at the same output right now. Let me uh, overlay them. Yeah, they look good. Awesome. So obviously, uh, next thing is to actually test the sound. So let me hook up a speaker. 
All right, I still have channel B hooked up to the scope. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the volume on channel A with it connected to a speaker. And there we go. It's working. So, again, last thing for me to do is to try and get these LEDs working. You can see we have a signal and clip LED for each channel. We should have a signal uh, illuminated right now. I don't know if it illuminates when it's uh, the volume's all the way down or if it's just if it has an input. I'm guessing if it has an input at all, but I'm not sure. So there's just a simple board behind these, and if there's just uh, you know white LEDs, I think I have some in stock. I'll replace those and um, we'll get it working. All right, I spoke too soon. All I had to do is turn the volume up a bit more. I guess it's got a minimum uh, signal threshold before the LEDs illuminate. So watch what happens when I turn up the volume. So they work just fine, good. So this one is fixed. Um, this was an interesting one, I liked it. But it's time to move on to the next project, so I will see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.